Hello, everybody, and welcome. Let's continue with our OpenGL, OpenTK programming. Uh, here's where we left off. We are now using index buffers to draw triangles from our vertex buffers. And so we have a rectangle here up on the display using index buffers. So today what I'd like to do is get into now being able to specify our vertices in screen space instead of normalized device coordinate space. And then using the vertex buffer to, to transform that screen space coordinate into the normalized device coordinate space. So in order to do this, we're gonna have to modify our vertex shader. And as our code gets more complicated and as our shaders get more complicated, we're gonna wanna have some kind of error checking when we compile the shaders. So the next thing I want to do is add error checking to the uh, compilation step of our vertex and pixel shaders. So let's go ahead and scroll down here. And uh, here's where we have our vertex shader code and our pixel shader code. And here's where we actually do the compilation of those shaders. Right underneath the compile shader function, I'm going to add an OpenGL function. And it's called get shader info log. And I'm just going to pass in the handle to our vertex shader. And this function returns a string. So let's go ahead and get that. Now, if there was no error, this string is just going to be empty. But if the string is not empty, that indicates there was an error in compiling our, our vertex shader code. And so I'm just going to do a quick check right here. So if it's not empty, uh, then there was an error in the compilation step. So let's go ahead and write to the console what that error was. And we can do the same thing down here. Take this. I'm just going to copy this code. I'm going to put it underneath the compile shader code. And instead of vertex shader info, I'm going to call this the pixel shader info. And then change the handle here, so we need the pixel shader handle. And then this will be the pixel shader info. Okay, and then just, that's a quick way that we can check for errors. And we can test to make sure this works. So I'm back in the shader code here. I'm going to go ahead and take away semicolon here, and it should return an error now. Okay, there you are. You can see the shader is not working there for the vertex shader, but it's also giving us the error here. And if we go to our console, it's telling us the error, and it's expecting one of these three symbols there, or one of these four symbols here, and that's the semicolon there that we did not add in. So let's go ahead and add that back, and we can see now that our error checking is working. So let's go ahead and talk about what the transform is going to look like. Um, all right, so what we're going to do here is this is the space that we want to be able to write our vertices in. All right, so this is the screen we've set up. I'm going to make the origin at the bottom left. The Y values will increase as we go up, and then the X values will increase as we go to the right. All right, and our current screen resolution or window resolution is 1280 by 768. And over here is our normalized device coordinate space. And in order to in order to display the information on the graphics card correctly, we need to transform this space into this space. And so I put a, a vertex point here, and we're just saying this is at 200, 100. And we need to figure out what that looks like over here in normalized device coordinate space, which would end up being in the same place on the screen. It just needs to be in the coordinate space between negative 1 and positive 1. The way we do this is we need to take this and transform the x and the y so they fit into the correct coordinate space over here. So we can normalize each of the coordinates by just dividing by the width and the height of the actual screen. So let's just say the x, and this is going to be our normalized x, is going to be equal to the current x, and that's going to be 200, uh, divided by the width of the window or the viewport. So I'm actually going to use the size of the viewport. So whatever the viewport is, that's what we're going to use to draw and convert our, pick, our vertices over here to normalized device coordinates. And in this case, our viewport is 1280. So we're going to divide the current position of the vertex by the width of the viewport. So that's going to be 1280. And that's going to give us a normalized coordinate that's between 0 and 1. But we need to convert this to a coordinate that's between negative 1 and positive 1. So then once we have that normalized coordinate, we're going to multiply that by 2, and then we're going to subtract 1. And if we do this on the x and the y, we'll move from our screen space coordinates into our normalized device coordinates. And we can do the same thing on the y. So the y is going to be the exact same formula except for our y coordinate here is going to be 100. And we're going to divide 100 by the actual uh, height of the viewport. In this case, it's 768. And then we do the same thing over here. We multiply by 2, and then we subtract 1. All right, so let's go back to our code. 
our vertex shader code actually does not know what the viewport size is. And so we need to find some way of passing information into our vertex shader. And this is where something called uniforms comes into play. Uniforms provide a way for us to send information to the graphics card or to the shaders themselves. So if I wanted to know what the size of the viewport was, I could make a uniform that was a vector two that had the size of the viewport. And then before I run my shader code, I can update that uniform or I can send the size of the viewport to the graphics card through that uniform. Inside our shader code, I'm gonna use the uniform keyword and I'm gonna tell the shader that this is a vector two and I'm gonna call this the viewport size. Now inside our shader, I'm gonna use this viewport size. And we're just gonna do the same formula we did right here. I'm gonna call this the normalized X coordinate is going to be equal to the actual position of the vertex, and that's gonna be a position, X. We're gonna divide by the viewport size, and the X coordinate of the uh, viewport size is gonna be the width of the viewport. Then we're going to multiply this by two, and we're gonna subtract one. And let's do the same thing for the Y, normalized Y. This is gonna be a position, Y. We're gonna divide that by the viewport size, Y. Multiply by two and subtract one. Okay, so now that we have our new X and Y, let's go ahead and, and put that information into our GL position here. And so this is gonna be the normalized X, the normalized Y, uh, and the Z coordinate is just going to be zero. Okay, and I'm gonna update uh, where I put some of these values. So I'm gonna put uh, the color assignment down here, move that like that, okay. All right, so now we're transforming from that screen space into normalized device coordinate space and sending that data to the graphics card with a GL position, and then we're sending the color there as well. Okay, so that's it for the vertex shader. That's everything we needed to do. Now we need to find out how do we send that viewport information to the vertex shader. And I'm just gonna scroll down here. All right, so here's where our shader code is. Right underneath that shader code, I'm going to get the viewport size. And GL has a function called get integer. And this get integer allows you to get all kinds of information from the graphics card. And it's looking for a get p name value. So we can type get p name and put a dot there. And it's going to tell you there's all kinds of things here that we can get from the graphics card. And it basically returns information to us about different states of the graphics card or things that the graphics card can do. Uh, the one we want is called the viewport, right? And that's going to return the size of the viewport. And we want to return this as an integer array. And the viewport's going to have four items in the integer array. It's going to have uh, the X and the Y position of the viewport. And it's going to have the width and the height of the viewport. We need to create an array of integers that has four items. So I'm going to have an integer array here. This is going to be, I'm going to call this the viewport. And we'll just create a new integer array. And it's going to have four items in it. Okay, and then we just send that viewport here. All right, so now uh, let's go ahead and test this. I'm gonna go ahead and put a breakpoint here and let's make sure that's working correctly. All right, so we can take a look at the viewport. All right, there we go. So there's the items in the viewport. Um, the X and the Y are the first two items and that's just zero, zero. And then the width and the height are the last two items and that's 1280 by 768. And so that looks like it's working just fine. Let's go ahead and close that. Uh, now we need to actually send this viewport information to the graphics card or to this uniform here in our vertex shader, the viewport size. Next, I need to get the location of that uniform um, in the shader program. So anytime I want to send information to a shader, I need to tell uh, OpenGL which program we're actually using. And then the next thing I want to do is actually get the location of that shader. And I can do that with a program called get uniform location. So we pass in the shader program handle, and then it wants the name. And the name is just a string that is this viewport size uniform uh, name right here. So we just need to spell it exactly like we did up there. So this is going to be the viewport size. Okay, and this is going to give me the location of that uniform, and that's going to be an integer. So I'm going to make a variable here called, let's just call this the viewport size uniform location. Okay, now that we have the location, we can actually set the uniform. And we do that through a function called uniform. And there's actually a bunch of different types of uniform functions we could use. And it depends on what type of value you're sending. So a uniform one indicates that we're sending one value. And in fact, I can bring that up here. Um, we can put in the location. That's the first thing it wants. And that's just our viewport size uniform location. Okay, then the other thing it wants is just one value. And the value has to match whatever type of uh, uniform it is. So in this case, 
uh, we have a vector two, which is actually two floating point values. So uniform one is not gonna work in this case. We would have to use uniform two because we're specifying two floating point values. The uniform two function just indicates that we're specifying two values or sending two values, or, or this uniform has two primitive values. In our case, these are gonna be floating point values. And the floating point values we want to send are from this viewport array, and it's the, uh, the second index and the third index, which contain the width and the height. So I'm going to tell it we want to send in the viewport uh, item number two, and then the viewport item number three. Okay, and that'll give it the width and the height. The only problem with this is that these viewport values are going to be integers. And inside our shader, the viewport size is actually a vector two, which, is, uh, which wants two floating point values. So if I were to send this information just like it's written here, it's going to try and send integers, and that's not going to work because it's expecting floating point values. And so I just need to do a cast real quick here and indicate that these are actually floating point values. Okay, and that's it for sending the information. I'm just going to tell it that we want to use program zero now just to tell it that we're not using any program at all. And that's it. That's how you um, get the location of a uniform and then send information to that uniform. And you can see the, uh, the, the actual uniform function has a lot of different types, like we could send matrix values. So you can go ahead and look through all of this. There's lots of different things that we could do with that. Uh, but in our case, all we need to do is send um, two values, two floating point values to our shader, and that's our viewport size. Okay, so now if we run this, we probably won't see anything. Yeah, because it's taking, we, we were providing the information in normalized device coordinate space, and now it's not showing up anything because it's trying to transform those little tiny values and it's transforming them and it's probably showing up right here, but they're, the values are so small that it's not, we're probably not gonna be able to see it right now. So let's go ahead and change our uh, vertex definitions here and we're gonna use screen space instead of, instead of normalized device coordinate space. And right here, I'm gonna go ahead and make some floating point values. I'm just gonna create a rectangle. So I'm going to make an X position for our rectangle. I'm just going to make that 384. And this is in screen space. Uh, the Y position, I'm going to make that 400. Then I want a width and a height. And so I'm just going to call that W and H. Uh, the width is going to be 512. And then the height, I'm just going to make uh, 256. Okay, so this is, the, uh, this is basically a rectangle that I want to now send to the graphics card. And I'm going to do that by changing these vertices. So here's vertex number or vertex index zero. I'm going to change that to our X position. And then I'm going to change the Y position to the Y plus the height. Okay. And actually, before we continue with this, let's take a look at what that's, uh, what we're actually drawing here. Okay. Let me draw the rectangle here. So it's going to look something like this. And remember, every, the way I draw things... I'm always starting at the origin down here in the bottom left. So when I'm drawing things, this is kind of the, the starting point. Everything will get uh, bigger on a positive Y going up and then bigger to the right on a positive X going right. This is going to be our X and our Y. So this would be X and this would be Y plus the height. Uh, this is gonna be X plus the width and Y plus the height. Uh, we're going to have x plus the width, and then this will just be y. Okay, so those are the four coordinates that we're going to specify. And let me go ahead and write that into our, um, our vertex array here. So first of all, I have the x and the y plus the height. And that's just going to be this vertex here. I'm going to call this vertex 0. This will be vertex 1, vertex 2, and vertex 3. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and specify, uh, finish writing that into our uh, vertex array. Uh, the next one is going to be the top right, which is going to be the X plus the width, and then the Y plus the height. Uh, next one is vertex at index number two. This is going to be X plus the width, and then Y is just going to be Y. And then the last one is vertex at index number three, and that's just going to be X. And then the Y is going to be Y. Uh, let me line up these comments. So now we've specified a rectangle here with an X and a Y, a width and a height. Um, we use this, this vertex array to now send that information to the graphics card. And we should now, because of the transform that we specify is here in our vertex shader code, we should be transforming that from screen space to normalized device coordinate space. And let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So now we are actually um, 
using a uniform to send information to the graphics card, uh, or actually to the vertex shader, and we're transforming the coordinates from screen space to normalized device coordinate space. So from here on out, we can specify all of our coordinates in screen space. And so now the intent is that we can start specifying more complex information um, like sprites and moving them around the screen because we're now specifying everything in screen space. All right, so that's how you do that transform and how you send information to the vertex and pixel shaders through uniforms.